SoFi stock on Friday hit a new all-time low. This is a very familiar saying. Almost every single video we talk about this, but in this upcoming week, that is going to be really the make it or break it moment. We have over 20% of the S&P 500 controlled just in four stocks that report earnings. And given the way that Netflix got shopped again, the instability in the markets, if those stocks don't put up great numbers, things are really going to get bad for the broad markets. Now, I will say for SoFi stock and for a lot of stocks that are already down 60, 70, 80, 90% from their highs, I don't think the sell-off will be as aggressive as it might be in some of these safety stocks. Believe it or not, I think a sell-off could be more aggressive in something like Apple, Google, Amazon, Nvidia, Tesla, some of these stocks that have been more safety stocks rather than your stocks that are down incredible amount. That's kind of what we seen on Friday as well. So if I was only down roughly about 3%, some other stocks were down much more than that. Some of these safety stocks actually down more than SoFi. So we have a lot to cover, some economic data that does come out, the GDP numbers, and it's going to get a little bit crazy. So hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you guys want to stay up to date with all of this information, only about 25% of you guys are actually subscribed to the channel. So those of you guys that went ahead and did that right now, thank you guys. Now let's get to it. So what we're looking at for this week are the four largest companies in the world. All of these companies over a $1 trillion market cap that are reporting earnings this week. You have Microsoft and Google Tuesday and after hours. And then Thursday and after hours, you have Apple and Amazon. Not to discredit any of these other players like Facebook that reports Wednesday, PayPal, Ford, Qualcomm, all of these are multi hundred billion dollar companies minus Ford that also report. But still, these four are going to be the main keys. If the market is going to hold up or not, it's going to come down to these four stocks. And if you take a look at the S&P weighting, Apple is 7%, Microsoft 5.65%, Amazon is 3.48%, Google class A shares are 2.01%, and Google class C shares are 1.86%. So collectively, just in these four stocks, you're looking at 20 percent of the S&P 500 to be more specific 19.92 percent of the S&P so almost 20 percent that's why I round it there but I am really worried about Apple Microsoft not so much Amazon I'm worried about them but you know not as much Google I think will be fine so Google and Microsoft I think will do okay whereas I think Amazon and Apple are really going to be the ones to struggle Amazon simply due to the fact they have already said that they cannot weather all of these inflationary costs right having to pay people more as well as seeing their I uh, costs for shipping items and, and other things going up so much they've literally cut, came out and said that we cannot handle this high inflation. And that was about a month ago they came out and said that. Whereas Apple, I'm very concerned about Apple because if you look at the valuations here, Apple is trading at a 27 PE ratio, whereas something like Facebook is trading at 13 PE ratio. So even if Apple dropped in half from here, they would be at roughly the same dollar for dollar valuation as Facebook. Now, what are the only differences here in these two companies? They both have very high margins. Facebook has higher margins than Apple, but Facebook lost users last quarter. And, you know, it's, it's, there's not been a bullish sentiment around Facebook. They're spending too much money on the metaverse. So there is differences here. But the main difference that has caused Facebook to crater and Apple not to crater is the fact that the markets are perceiving Apple to have this incredible growth year over year, whereas Facebook is not really expected to grow too much anymore. That's why you have a low PE on Facebook and a higher PE on Apple. Now, if we actually look at Apple, let's take away the funny money here. Let's take away the stimulus, the unemployment boost, the child tax credits, minus all of that. What did Apple do in a normal year? Well, 2018, 2019, they actually lost about $5 billion of revenue, lost about $4 billion of bottom line earnings. 2020 was slightly better, earning about $14 billion uh, in revenue higher than 2019 and earned about $2 billion more in bottom line profits. Then what happened in 2020? All the funny money started to go crazy. 
Apple actually made about $45 billion of bottom line earnings higher than 2020 and almost $100 million billion dollars more in revenue. But that's what the markets don't fully understand. It's This was not organic growth. This was funny money that went to Apple. A lot of uh, you know, the free money out there that was given out, people went out and bought Apple products. Some, you know, people that were unable to buy them before until they got this free money. And I've seen that in my personal life. I know you guys have as well. So that's the big thing that I'm worried about. If Apple does not post incredibly good numbers, they're going to see a big drop in their valuation because a 27 PE ratio is valued as like a 10 to 15 or 20 percent growth rate year over year and apple used to be stagnant for a long time so i don't think that they're going to be able to beat these 2021 numbers and if they are not good for q1 coming on thursday the stock will get destroyed if apple gets destroyed the markets get destroyed. Now, when it comes down to SoFi stock though, I think like I said in the beginning of this video, stocks that have fallen 60, 70, 80, 90% from their highs, I don't think those would take as big of a beating. If you guys have not been in the markets for a while, maybe you have, but you just forgot. When you see instability in the markets, when stocks really start to go down in a dramatic way, it hits certain sectors first. So you've seen a lot of your higher growth, non-profitable stocks that are the ones that are down 60, 70, 80, 90%. Those ones have already gotten beat down. Well, you really can't find a bottom until the safety stocks, until stocks like Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, until those stocks hit really low levels. Then you kind of get a bid in the whole market and then the markets will all rally back uh relatively speaking some stocks maybe not as much some stocks are never coming back but it, it, to a certain extent those stocks that are down a lot won't sell off as much the ones that have not sold off as much like apple will come down that's when you find a bottom that's when people will actually feel comfortable buying the dip on these stocks so pfft, Leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. What do you guys think about that one? We also do have economic data that does come out this week as well. If we go ahead and pull up the economic calendar, you can see on Thursday, you have GDP quarter over quarter for Q1. Uh, that comes in Thursday as well, the same day Apple reports earnings at 8.30 in the morning. That's expected to come in at about 1.1%. If GDP misses, you're going to see those fears of a recession coming back to life stronger than ever. And people are going to freak out don't be confused there people will freak out about the gdp if it does come in bad now if it's good and apple earnings are good then it's very possible the markets you know make new all-time highs very possible and then on thursday as well 8 30 in the morning you have initial jobless claims if jobless claims come in worse than expected, it could actually be a bullish thing for the markets because maybe the Fed wouldn't have to act as aggressively, right? That's kind of the, the mindset that the markets have right now. Anything that would stop the Fed from going as aggressive will be seen as a bullish thing, even if it could be seen as a negative thing for the overall economy. Now, let's dive into some of the numbers for SoFi stock, like the option activity as well as the short interest because the shorts have taken over this stock there's no other way to put it if we're looking at the short interest that is sitting at 20.62 percent current shares that are sold short 149 million that is absolutely ridiculous cost of our max of 6.56 percent share utilization of 100 percent and days to cover sitting at 3.54 now i will say like i just said if these big stocks come down and you hit that bottom and then the markets do start to finally rally, maybe a couple weeks from now, maybe after the markets, you know, sit at these lows for a little while and, and digest what happened with a 20.62% short interest. Once it does bounce back, you're likely to see a bounce back similar to what you've seen uh, during the 2020 crash. Everything crashed, everything hit a bottom, like everything was beaten down. And then the whole market started to rally back within two months was at, um, you know, had pretty much recovered that whole drop. And I think you would see a little bit of a short squeeze uh, start to happen with SoFi or at least some of those shorts start to cover. And that would definitely drive up the price of SoFi in a very dramatic way. So I think... The fact that we're hitting these new all-time lows 
you know, is uh, not bullish, but it's definitely a good price to be buying here uh, for SoFi stock, in my personal opinion. As far as the option activity, over the past week, 60 orders totaling $17.15 million, positive order value of 55%. So even over the past week, where the markets were extremely oversold, just beaten into the ground, one of the worst weeks that we have seen uh, in years, the option flow activity was majority bullish with 55% bullish on SoFi stock. So I think that is definitely a uh, good sign right there, just to say the least. Now we'll see if any new headlines come up that, that, you know, does shock the markets. You do have those senior U.S. officials that are visiting Ukraine. It's going to be uh, Blinken and um, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin as well that, um, do meet with Ukraine here, I believe today. So we'll see how futures open and see how um, the markets do take that because that was actually announced in after hours on uh, Friday. So we will see on that. I really don't expect anything too crazy. All focus will be on earnings for this week. And then obviously that GDP number. Now on top of that, the federal funds rate is pricing in a 50 base point rate hike at the next three meetings. Markets, for whatever reason, on Friday they did not ex they 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 priced in 50 basis point hikes, but they didn't really expect them. They they kind of think the Fed is just bullshitting and and, and not really going to uh, follow through with what they said. And I think people started to realize like, hey, the Fed might actually do this uh, here at the next meeting and in, over the next couple of meetings. So they had to rapidly reprice that. And we've talked about it many times and it's projected with over 50% uh, probability uh, until December, all of these meetings to get a 50 basis point rate hike. It actually says 100% for the 50 basis point rate hike back here in December as well. So uh, pretty interesting right there. We'll see what happens. Earnings are going to be uh, very, very key. We have no economic data besides that that could really move the markets. We do have some real estate data, but I don't expect that to do all too much when everything is all said and done. Earnings are going to be the biggest thing. If these stocks cannot hold up, it's going to get very, very bad for the markets. Now, we did, like I said, hit that all-time low on friday at six dollars 32 cents per share we bounced up a little bit we closed at six dollars 37 cents per share if the markets are very bad if gdp comes in bad if apple earnings are bad microsoft earnings are not so good you know google amazon everything is bad then watch that five dollar level for potential support and watch to see how fast we sell off like i said a lot of stocks were down more than three percent even apple was down I believe about 3%. I know Facebook was down about 3%. Uh, Google got destroyed down more than SoFi. So watch that $5 level and just watch to see how uh, we sell off. If we're getting you know smaller down days in the markets or larger down days, that will really tell you a little bit of what is actually going on behind the surface. But $5, that's going to be a key support level and i don't think we will break under that i think you'll find a lot of support right there the 50-day moving average at nine dollars 52 cents per share if gdp is good if these companies earnings are also very good then it's possible you know everything could bounce back very aggressively so i don't want to be the you know doomsday prepper the bearer of bad news here because it there it could be it could be bullish and if it is then i would expect sofi and these other stocks that have gotten beaten into the ground to rebound slightly but still until the fed is further along in the tightening cycle i really don't expect a major uh rebound but still that's within the next couple of months we'll be more so uh, going through this tightening cycle already now as far as the macd extremely bearish the rsi is extremely negative as well 28.89 neutral is 50 so we are on the extreme oversold side and every single time that we have hit that we have always bounced back up like you guys can see right here right here right here right here right here right here and now right here so we're definitely due for a bounce we'll see how big it is i cannot uh forecast that for you guys but i think it's going to be very very important sofi does report earnings on may 10th and that's going to be the next big single catalyst for sofi stock unless we do get some news of a buyout or something which i do not want to happen or if sofi you know does something else we will address that when it happens but that's going to be it you guys enjoy the rest of your sunday hit the like button subscribe to the channel on your way out thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one